What's going on everyone? It's RGB Tech back here again. In today's video, we're taking a look at the WinLater 10 final version for Android. And this time, I'll be testing it out on a device with a Mali GPU device. And this is the official WinLater GitHub page. The setup process is almost the same as usual, just like we've done in recent videos. But this time, there are a lot of improvements, especially if you're using a Mali GPU device, good news for you guys. Here it is, WinLater 10 final version. Final doesn't mean it's the end. It simply means this is a stable release. In this update, they've made several improvements, and you can see the changelog right here. They've improved the task manager, added a GPU menu to the start menu, included the missing GStreamer plugin, and finally added configuration support for the Vortec driver. This last one is huge. The new Vortec driver is now compatible with both Mali GPUs and previously unsupported Adreno GPUs. They've made changes by integrating Vulkan driver extensions, enhancing compatibility with Mesa Zinc, and boosting performance overall. You can also check out the older beta builds of WinLater 10 here if needed. As usual, if you've already installed WinLater, you can simply download this release and apply it as an update. Now I've already installed WinLater on this device. This is the Infinix Note 50X, powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 7300 with a Mali G6 15 2-core GPU. It supports the latest Vulkan 1.3 drivers and comes with 8 GB of RAM. All right, I'm closing everything, so let's get started. Open WinLater. Allow the necessary permissions. And now head into the settings. The Box64 version is set to 0.3.4 by default. Let's switch that to the latest one, 0.3.5. Choose the preset to intermediate or performance. Next, create a new container. For resolution, I go with 800 by 600 low. Here, the graphic driver is already set to Vortec. If we go into configuration, you can now adjust the Vortec driver settings based on your device. Vulkan driver is shown as version 1.3 with over 114 exposed extensions, depending on your phone's GPU. Set the max device memory to 4GB or no limit. That's it, DXVK is already selected. Audio driver is set to pulse audio. Enable the FPS meter and leave the rest of the settings as default. In the advanced tab, startup selection is set to aggressive. Windows version is set to 7 or 10. Enable all CPU cores. Now save the container and boot it up. All right, it's booted. Let's open Task Manager and you'll notice it's been redesigned. Now it shows more detailed stats like CPU clocks, temperature, and battery usage. Next, go to the Start menu and open the Direct 3D test to check if it's working. Hmm, it's showing a blank screen, but the FPS meter is still running. This happens sometimes, especially on newer Dimensity chips. Here's something new they've added GPU info. I can see my device's GPU name, driver version, Vulkan API, and all the available extensions and features right here. In the OpenGL section, it shows compatibility too. The renderer is Zinc Vortec for the Mali GPU, and the GL version is based on the Mesa compatible profile. Now let's jump into a real-time test. I'll be testing out the GTA 4 on this Mali GPU. First, let's create a shortcut and exit the container. Now go to Shortcuts. The settings here are same as the container settings. Also turn off Wi-Fi. Let's load the game. All right, the FPS meter appears at the top left. The game runs, but still the screen is blank. This is a known issue on some new Dimensity chipsets. Anyways, now same I'll try it on other phone with an Exynos Mali GPU almost a quite equivalent to it. And this is my Galaxy device, powered by the Exynos 1380 with a Mali G68 5-core GPU. Same with the latest driver's extensions. The phone comes with 6GB RAM. Everything's already set up here. Let's first check Direct3D. Nice, it's working! No blank screen this time, and performance FPS looks good. So yes, if you've got a Helio G99 with Mali G57, it should also work the same. Now let's launch it. Okay, it's working. We've got full output this time. In the game's graphics settings, set everything to low and... 
Turn off definition and V-Sync. Let's run the benchmark. And yes, it's finally working on a Mali GPU. There are still some graphical glitches and frame drops, but it's playable. Honestly, this feels like a GTA from the future Grand Theft Cyber Society or something. Just kidding. But overall, this is great news for Mali GPU users. Yes, there are still some bugs, but with future updates to the Vortec driver, we might see even better support unlike the older Vergiel. So that's it guys, WinLater 10 Final brings big improvements, especially for Mali GPU users. GTA 4 is now playable on some Mali devices, thanks to the new Vortec driver with driver extension support. If you're using a Mali GPU, this update is definitely worth checking out. If you found this video helpful, make sure to drop a like, and don't forget to subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.